Today we're going to be talking about a new offering that we have with our 3D scanning services. So some of you may be familiar with our 3D printing services. Uh, due to customer demand, we've expanded that uh, as a business unit onto our scanning service side as well. So basically, when, when do we want to utilize CATI? Any time that you don't have the budget, desire, or manpower to do projects in-house, and you can really leverage our extensive hardware portfolio where maybe it would make sense for you to purchase one scanner yourself. We already have a fleet of all the different kinds of equipment necessary for a wide range of different jobs. So have us uh, come in and, and be that stopgap on the hardware side, as well as the years of experience on the scanning and modeling side as well. So we can really handle the, the end to end workflow uh, of the entire job for you. So call us in. We got the big guns. We're going to be able to handle whatever you throw at us. So when should we utilize uh, 3D scanning services? If you have really complex or feature rich geometry that would take a long time to measure by hand or CMM uh, methods. When we've got easily deformable materials, the 3D scanners use a non-contact form of measurement with structured light or lasers, and this allows us to measure very thin or very flexible materials without deforming that surface at all to allow for a, a much better, uh, more accurate measurement of that part. In process mobile scanning, so we can take the uh, equipment out on the shop floor, measure parts still in CNC setups, in fixturing, things like that, as well as mobile measurements. So we can bring the tool, the scanner, out to the part when the part can't be moved, or maybe it's a little bit more inconvenient for the part to be moved back to something like a, a QC lab. Here's our hardware portfolio that we utilize for our scanning services. So with the GoScan Spark, we can do uh, uh, color scans. So if you're doing any sort of designs or sculptures or anything like that, art or historical. Um, with the Handy Scan uh, line, as well as the MetroScan line, we're utilizing lasers as opposed to a white light with the GoScan. Allows for uh, more accurate scans, higher resolution scans. This is what we're using more for higher end reverse engineering and as well as quality control. All these three pieces of equipment here are uh, metrology certified, so they, they really lend themselves to quality control applications. Finally, on the bottom, we have a, a photogrammetry measurement system with the Max Shot Elite. So this is for very large volume measurements, as well as we do have a probing option with the Handy Probe. So anywhere that the scanner maybe can't reach or, or maybe it just lends itself much better to a probing application, whatever part we're trying to measure, we do have probing capabilities as well. So let's take a high level overview of what this process looks like. So we have our part here. We're going to place reflective targets on the surface of that part that allows our scanner to create a reference frame. So that scanner is going to detect that constellation of targets, create a reference frame that will then allow us to begin collecting that surface data based off of the lasers being projected on the surface of the part. Once we have that data collected, essentially what we're doing is we're placing a bunch of points on the surface of this part. And obviously these are, are zoomed in for demonstration purposes. We're talking millions of points here, very, very small points. Let's talk about some of the specifications that you'll see if you look at any of the documentation for the scanners and, and what those mean in real world terms. First, let's talk about accuracy. This is our point to surface accuracy. So first I've highlighted here the nominal surface or, or the real world surface. So this is what is actually sitting on the table in front of me with this part. And technically speaking, we can never actually measure that perfectly, right? No matter what measurement method we, we use, there's going to be some sort of error involved. So this is the true unattainable perfect measurement is the nominal. Our goal is to place points directly on that surface. Like I said, there's a little bit of error because it's a real world uh, process that we're using to measure. But what ends up happening is we got a little bit of variance in the measurements. So we've got a, a, a range up and a range down, a plus or minus of for this uh, particular scanner, the HandyScan Black Elite is nine ten thousandths of an inch. So we've got a window plus or minus nine ten thousandths of an inch that our points uh, will be within relative to the true perfect nominal measurement. That's our point to surface accuracy. How far apart those points are on the surface of the part is the resolution of the scan. So now this is resolution and accuracy are two different specifications, although they are both nine ten thousandths in this specific case. 
Um, resolution ties into what's the finest feature that we're able to see. So think of it just like a, a 240p YouTube video versus a 4K YouTube video, right? The 4K is the higher resolution. It allows us to see finer details more clearly. So if we have a part that is very, very fine details and we want to be able to take measurements on, we're going to need to scan at a very high resolution. If that part doesn't have very fine details, we can scan at a lower resolution and we can save on file size and processing time. The third specification I want to bring up is called volumetric accuracy. So with accuracy, you're talking about point to surface accuracy. There's only one degree of uncertainty. With volumetric accuracy, we are now measuring point to point. We now have a second degree of uncertainty involved, which means that our accuracy is going to be slightly worse. In this particular instance, so you see we have our, our double accuracy windows now. In this particular instance over this 24 inch span, we're looking at plus or minus 1.3 thousandths of an inch instead of 0 0.9 thousandths of an inch or 9 10 thousandths. So as we measure from point to point, uh, the accuracy stacks up or, or the error stacks up a little bit more. We have a wide range of software that we can use to complete your project. We have the entire suite of VX elements that is uh, created by our scanners uh, OEM Creoform. We also have additional solutions with Geomagic and Innovmetric. So if you, if you have uh, a little bit um, more intense requirements to your project or different formatting, uh, we have something that, that can get the job done for you. One of our two main services is reverse engineering. So do you have the part on site? Maybe it's an old part, maybe it's a competitor's part, but you don't have a CAD file, you don't have any kind of documentation with that. We can help you out with that. We can take that physical sample of the part and we can create it in a CAD model very, very accurately to that physical sample as it exists uh, in, your, in your business today. Uh, we've got a bunch of different workflows that we'll go through next to show you what we can actually get for you depending on what your goals are with the project. And we can also do human body scans, art and historical and digital part repair type projects. So the first file type we can get you is the most basic one. It's an STL file. If you've interacted with 3D printing at all, um, you're probably familiar with STL files. What I, I like to call it is it's we're, we're basically creating a disco ball of the part, except for instead of squares, we're using triangles, as you can see on the right. So it's a uh, the STL stands for surface tessellation language. It's a triangular tessellation of that surface. It has very limited information and editability, uh, but it is very good for 3D printing and it is very quick and easy to make uh, off of a scan. A scan is essentially a, a native STL file and, and everything after this requires a little bit of engineering time in order to uh, post process that data. So this is the, basically uh, with a little bit of elbow grease, the raw output from the scanner is an STL file. Moving forward, a little bit more functional of a file is a NURBS surface solid body file. So here we are taking that mesh file, that STL file that we just talked about, and we are shrink wrapping it with CAD surfaces. Again, it's it's not very editable. It's it's very as is, whatever the part was that day. If it had any nicks or dings or scratches or anything, those are going to show up in this file as well. Um, but it is now CAD friendly. So if you try to take an STL file, a lot of the times it will just not work if you try to pull it into a CAD program, or it'll work very, very poorly and it'll just be kind of a visual representation, if that. Here with this NURB surface, we can use it as a tool body. We can build onto it, we can cut into it, we can use it for interference detection, and it is very useful as a visual reference as well. So this is one step up from that STL file. Moving forward, we also can do primitive surface solid body type files. So this is now clean face and edge and vertex data as opposed to just kind of shrink wrapping at, uh, uh, almost at random at the previous file, but they are as is from the mesh. So you will have face information if you wanted to do any sort of uh, a CNC milling program and, and have this be, be able to select a face or, or take a measurement from face to face, things like that. Uh, the downside to this choice is that there is no parametric history. So we do have the face information, but there's no parametric history like you're used to with a traditional CAD or SOLIDWORKS file. So it, it is what it is, it as is, um, but at least you have that face information. And as we're going along with all these file types, the more function you get out of them, the more engineering time that we need to put in, which, which will increase cost. So it's a, it's a balance between how much function do you need versus budget. And finally, native CAD. So this is your traditional CAD file, 
Um, you, you've never really been able to tell it came from a scan. We build it like it is uh, with the feature tree on the left there. You see it's, it's fully editable. Um, you can either do as is or idealize it. And at this point in time, we support native SOLIDWORKS, Inventor, and Creo file types. We can also do digital part repairs. If you have a broken part, we can scan all the pieces and fit them together just like a puzzle. And whether that's as a mesh or as a CAD file or, or whatever you need, if your part is broken, it's not the end of the world, we can do some, some digital repair on that. We can do human body scans as well. So we've, uh, we have customers using this technology for medical scans, sports equipment, clothing and costume design. And, and this is very useful for these more organic shapes where this would be very difficult to model accurately by hand, we can just take exactly what exists in the real world, pull that into CAD and, and design off of that. We can do art and historical preservation and documentation as well. The picture on the left, if you caught my last presentation a week or two ago, uh, was when we were on site at the Michigan Central Station with Ford doing this exact application. So this is a, a great real world application. We're scanning, uh, uh, historical artifacts and architecture, and we are for that particular one, we were doing digital repair as well as um, um, creating tooling for restoration. On the on the right, that is more of a scan for just documentation purposes for, for a museum. Our second most popular application or, or the second application we were involved a lot with is inspection quality control. So when do we want to look at using 3D scanning inspection? If you've got a lack of inspection capacity, you've got a machine down or you've got a guy that called in sick for a couple of weeks. Uh, if you have a large number of inspection points, so uh, CMMs or manual hand measurements are what's known as a serial process. If you have 10, if you have 100 inspection points that you need to measure versus 10 inspection points, it's gonna take you 10 times as long to get that job done. Every inspection point you add, adds time to that process. Whereas with 3D scanning, it's a parallel process. You just have the sunk time of acquiring the scan data. And after that, if you want to measure five things, if you want to measure 500 things, the data is going to process and, and be the exact same amount of time from five to 500, whether you're measuring a ton of things or, or just a few things. So that helps out when you're, you need to measure a lot of things. You can get a lot of parts measured very, very quickly. Um, if we're looking for data visualization via color map, so you see the color map on the right there, it's a great visual aid just so you can see what's going on with the part. Um, because usually on, on quality control documentation, you get all the, the different uh, line items of all the inspection points. And that's great if you're very, very familiar with that part and what the inspection, what's going on. If you're not so familiar, it can kind of be a little bit difficult to read. So these are very great as a, a visual aid at the beginning of the report. So I can look at this car door and anywhere that's green means I'm in spec, red means I'm too high, blue means I'm too low. So if I were to talk about this inspection in plain English, what I would say is it looks like I have two dents, the blue spots on the car door, and I'm also missing the car door handle. You can see that that's all as well. So that's a very nice, uh, I'll call it a cliff notes version of the inspection report. And then you go into the, the more specific uh, line items of, of inspection points. Additionally, if you have very complex geometry to measure, especially if you're trying to measure surface pro profile GDNT, we can place, like I said, millions of points on surfaces. So you get a very, very good density of your data and you have confidence that you are holding that surface profile GDNT call up. Our hardware is metrology certified. You see all the different certifications that the hardware comes with from the OEM. Um, so we can use the handy probe, both uh, the handy scan silver and the handy scan black, as well as the metro scan black. What types of inspections can we do? We have a couple different reporting options. We can do a, a basic color map like we saw on the car door. We can do a critical dimension check, just a few things on the print that we need to make sure are in spec. We can also do a full FAI or PPAP report. So every single thing you got called out on there, we can measure that for you. Also very useful for tooling adjustment and alignment. Our nominal options, the, the best is always going to be the CAD model. The CAD model is what we're going to use as that gold standard, what to measure off of, and we're, what we're going to use for alignment, data measurement, all that sort of good stuff. If you don't have a CAD model, we can use another scan, or basically you would give us a part that you say, this is good, this is what we want to call our gold standard. 
we scan that part up and then we compare all the rest of the parts to that original part. So scan is doable as well. Um, and if you don't have any options, we can just do numerical input too. So CAD is best, scan is second best, numerical input gets the job done. Let's take a look at first article inspection. So here we have an example of the mesh file being overlaid onto the CAD file. We're going to take some specific measurements here, diameters, planes, uh, uh, surface deviation callouts, and we can specifically call those out in this three dimensional view in order to take our measurements, right? A second thing we can do is take a color map, or excuse me, a cross section, and we can do color maps as well as measurements on that cross section as well. We take a look at this type of parts. So we have the 3D model. And we have the print. So this is what ideally you would provide to us, both the 3D model and the print, which defines exactly what you're looking to get measured. So you have all the uh, specific bubble callouts here for all the uh, uh, about 12 or 15 or so inspection points here that you're looking to get measured. And we would create a report with matching views off of this type of document. We can also do statistical process control. So now this is very useful for seeing the trends of the um, of the measurements over the entire span of the sample size. So maybe we have a, a specific inspection point that is has a lot of very low variance, but it's out of spec. So that's a very precise process. It doesn't have the accuracy needed to get the job done though. And you can have the opposite. Maybe the average is in spec, you have a good accuracy on your process, but the spread is really, really wide. You have really poor precision, really poor repeatability on that process. So doing something like statistical process control gives you that next tier of visibility into your manufacturing process, right? We're not just looking at our parts, good or bad. We're looking at the process upstream. Okay, do we think that we are controlling our process properly or maybe that's where we need to, to look? So what are the, some of the benefits of 3D scanning for inspection? So like we said, it's, it's faster. We can save time to market. It allows you to look deeper into your manufacturing process and get a, a much better control over it. It makes first article inspection easy. So normally first article inspections take forever. You've got so many inspection points. It's, it's really an arduous process. And again, like we said, once we have that 3D scan data, we can take as many measurement points as we need to on that. It, it really is no difference. Um, Greater surface visibility for color maps as well as uh, surface uh, profile GDT, and you just get you get more detailed data, right? With a with a CMM, you're taking a few points. With a scanner, you're taking hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of points of data. Let's take a look at uh, using this technology for maintenance, repair, and overhaul. So here we're looking at a specific application with toolware. So we have our molding tool. We've scanned it up after 50,000 cycles, and you can see based on the color map that we have a few points of wear on that surface, which is to be expected. It's, it's normal wear and tear on the tool. They're not meant to last forever. We can scan it up again at 100,000 cycles. We see the wear has increased as expected. Scan it up at 150,000 cycles, and now we have three data points of amount of wear versus number of cycles. And what this allows us to do is to project that data out over time and decide, okay, it looks like maybe it's 250, maybe it's 350 thousand cycles is when our tool is going to wear so much that it will no longer produce quality parts for us. And this allows us to plan for the end of life of that tool uh, uh, with, with a lot of ease as opposed to kind of estimating it from the beginning. We're, we're taking real world data, we're seeing how this tool is wearing out over time, and we're able to predict that as opposed to waiting for the day that parts start to come bad off this tool and QC uh, red flags it. And now we need a tool here today that takes two or three weeks to make, or, or maybe even more, right? So we're getting ahead of the game. We're being uh, proactive instead of reactive here. Let's take a look at a fixture adjustment inspection application. So we've got a fixture here and we need to adjust on these clamps. There are some standoffs. So you need to adjust these standoffs to the proper height so that we can uh, clamp and hold this part and the parts coming off of this will be in spec once they're, they're properly assembled. So our first step is going to be establish a reference frame that is locked to the fixture itself. And we're gonna do that using the C-Track. And uh, I've highlighted the reflective targets that, that we're placing on the fixture there. 
once we have our alignment created, we can define our measurement point in software. So this is going to be the standoffs of those clamps. So we're going to take our first measurement. So our first measurement we see here, we are 1.49 millimeters out of spec with this standoff point. So that's that's way too far out of spec for this application. We need to adjust it. The beauty of using the handy probe here is that we can adjust it with live feedback. So as the operator adjusts that standoff, we watch the software and we wait for that number to get to an acceptable error there, and we know that our setup is good. So now we have instant feedback that tells us that we're basically right on the money. We can lock that in and, and we have a good fixture set up there. Something else to note is that this entire project was completed in a live shop floor environment. So you see we've got forklifts driving by, we've got uh, garage doors opening and closing. Because we locked that reference frame to the fixture with those reflective targets, all of those vibrations and disturbances are filtered out automatically. So, so we don't have to pull this to a, a, a special um, uh, environmentally controlled QC lab in order to do this. We bring the equipment out to the shop floor and, and we do it live right there. With virtual assembly, we take two different parts and we can assemble them virtually. Uh, maybe these two parts are in, in two different facilities, or maybe we just want to be able to measure things that would be very difficult to get to by hand uh, if these were actually assembled. We can check for interferences and we can check for flush and gap very easily virtually as opposed to having to try to get some tooling to do it, or maybe it's not even possible to do it in the real world. So we can pop these together and we can take all those different measurements that we need to take. Let's take a closer look at how this would work. So our first step is going to place our positioning targets around the area needing to be scanned. Once we have our targets, we can acquire the data of the as assembled uh, motorcycle seat. Once we have that scan, we'll disassemble the parts that we're interested in. And we're going to scan, we're going to now do three extra scans. We're going to scan the exposed surface and then we're going to expand, ex scan both of those parts that we pulled off. Once we have those scans completed, we will pull them into software. Uh, we won't even need to do any alignment because they will share that same constellation of targets, which is pretty nice. Uh, and once we have all those four scans together, we can then take our measurements and virtually cut away with clipping planes and views and things like that and take measurements in very hard to reach areas if this was as assembled on the bike. But because we're virtual, we can play around with the software. So as you can see, getting an angle measurement on these two planes that are very, very tight there would be very difficult to do in the real world. It's, it's no consequence in the software. So it allows measurement of normally inaccessible areas. Um, it's also very useful for uh, assembly tooling, so fixturing as well. So maybe it's not part to part fit up, maybe it's part to fixture fit up, and we can see what kind of interference or if it's it's going to be uh, uh, fixtured into the fixture properly. If you have a project in mind and you're interested in cost, lead time, and deliverable details, um, we're very interested in working with you. We need to get a little bit more information on your background and what you're trying to accomplish. You can contact us phone, email, web, you see the, the QR codes there as well. And we will reach out to you and we'll, we'll get the ball rolling. We'll need some background information from you. We'll be able to get you an estimate. Uh, like I said, cost, lead time and deliverables that we'll be able to get you. And we can see if we can help you out. Thank you guys for attending.